Hi everyone and welcome to the Knit California channel. My name is Leslie, I'm Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok and today we're talking about my spring knitting plans. We are already a week into April. Today is April 7th, 2024, and I am considering the spring knitting season to be April, May, and June. So it's about time that I come on here and talk to you about what my plans are for this new season of knitting. But before we go through um, everything for spring, I wanted to take a step back and look at my winter knitting plans, goals, and just talk to you about how the season went. I did not actually make a full like winter knitting plans video. Um, I made a lot of videos like at the start of the new year but in general I started my make nine in winter and I cast on a ton of projects. Um, in general like right now I'm feeling like I over promised and under delivered to myself for my winter knitting plans and my winter knitting projects. Um, I've got my knitting journal here and I kind of wanted to like walk you through a little bit like what I cast on in January uh, because it was a lot. It was honestly too much. <laughs> From January through March I cast on eight projects. Okay, um, this cow cardigan that I'm actually wearing right now, this is one of the only things that I finished in the first quarter of the year. My Ingrid sweater, an Oslo hat, a field day cardigan, my Farnham sweater, my Riley tee, my dust bunny cardigan, and the mini mock neck tank. There were a couple other little things that I did in there. I made some Valentine's Day hearts, those were completed in a day. I've knit two of my pattern that's coming out soon, the uh, Knit E-Reader Cozy. I have knit two of those, both of which have been finished. And the only things from that list of eight that have been finished are this Cal Cardigan, like I said, that I finished in March. So this was a project from January through March. An Oslo hat that took a month to knit from January 18th to February 19th. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, the other finished objects that I have are the Valentine's Day hearts and the Kindle uh, e -read knit e-reader cozies that I finished. Everything else is still a whip. So that's one, two, three, four, five, five active whips. Um, it would be six, but I've like consciously put the mini mock neck tank on hold and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So I'm, and there are a couple other of these projects that are kind of like on hold right now also. I have not touched them in at least a month if not more than that. Um, and so yeah just in general my winter knitting was like chaotic and overwhelming if I had to pick two words to describe it. So as we move into spring, I'm really trying to do the opposite of what I did this winter. When I first started casting everything on in January, I was like really excited about it because it was a lot of projects that, well a couple first that were on my Make 9, and a lot of projects that I have been wanting to cast on and wanting to knit for a really long time. And working a little bit at a time each week on each project was really exciting and fun for probably the first month and a half, to like two months of the year. And then in March, I feel like I really took a nosedive and was just like, I'm not happy, <laughs> I'm not excited, nothing has been finished, I don't feel great about any of my projects, they're all in the same spot, I wish they were done, and that's kind of like where I have been sitting, like I said, for like almost the whole month of March. Moving from March into April and where I'm at right now is I'm 
reducing the number of projects that I'm working on at one time. I really only have like two main projects that I'm working on right now and I really want to get these finished before I shift my focus into anything new. So money that's so stinky. <laughs> Buddy just did the stinkiest fart. <laughs> Bud, I love you. Don't give me those puppy dog eyes when you make a really stinky fart while I'm doing a podcast. So as we're moving into spring and getting farther into April, what I'm really trying to focus on right now, uh, like I said, is finishing some of these whips. So I'm going to talk you through what I have on the needles right now that I'm looking to finish uh, this spring, and then I'm going to talk you through some of the new projects that I have in mind, uh, likely to start in May or in June. So the first thing that I really want to focus on is my Ingrid sweater. So this is one of my Make 9 projects. I cast this on in January. It was one of the ones that was languishing for a while, but I feel like in the last couple of weeks I have made some really good progress. I have finished the body and I am on the first sleeve. So this is my Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. Yes, this is in a 100% superwash merino yarn. So it's not going to be like the best to wear once the weather finally starts to warm up, warm up, but I do feel like I need to get this done. I need to get this off the needles so that I can feel a little bit more accomplished from my winter knitting. I am really loving it so far. So this is one of my two main sweater whips that I'm focusing on right now. The second one is my Farnham sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. I have made what feels like significant progress on this in the last week alone. Let me show you where I'm at. Um, Yesterday I filmed a podcast and yesterday my progress keeper was up here. I filmed the podcast and now my progress keeper is all the way down here. You cannot see that at all. Here we go. Okay, you can kind of see the mark where the progress keeper was and where it is now. So I did all of that this week and just, you know, yesterday and this morning, I have also made a decent amount of progress because here's where I was after filming the podcast yesterday. I've done a little over two inches just yesterday and this morning. So this one is moving really fast. This is actually like my main focus currently, like today, this weekend, this week. Once I finish the body, I think I will probably uh, move on and like work on the sleeve of my Ingrid sweater and then go back and forth. But these are the two that I'm really, like I said, hoping to finish as quickly as possible before I move on to really any like spring themed knitting. Again, this one will likely, like once I finish it, it's probably gonna be too warm to wear it. I probably will still wear this one, uh, at least indoors when the air conditioning is on and I'm too cold. Um, it is a sport weight sweater, at least the gauge that I'm knitting it up to and I'm using sport weight yarn. So it does feel a little bit lighter in general compared to my Ingrid sweater. So I don't know, I don't really have any um, full length sweaters that are in a weight less than DK weight. So I'm excited to see how I like this and how it feels when I'm done with it. Okay, another whip that I have on the needles that I'm looking forward to finishing is actually a spring tee that I did start in, when did I cast this on? I cast this on mid-February because the yarn was in collaboration with 
um, through the wardrobe yarn co for her Bridgerton collection and so I cast this on in a promotion for that this is the Riley tee by Rachel Kurihara and I'm pretty close to being done with it the body is finished the neckline is finished I just need to add the sleeves but I basically ran out of yarn I was playing yarn chicken I ran out of yarn so I do have another skein that is coming to me um, I think it's been shipped but it's making its way across the Atlantic Ocean from Norway here to Southern California um, so once I get that this might be back on the needles and hopefully finished very soon. I'm excited for this one to be done because I can see this, envision this being like a staple in my spring knitting wardrobe that I actually wanna wear. Whereas the other two, like I said, are, you know, long sleeve full length sweaters. This one is going to be short sleeve and the yarn that I'm using for this is a wool silk 50-50 blend. So I have a couple other sweaters, uh, short sleeve tees in wool silk blends that I wore a lot last year through spring, summer, fall. And so I'm envisioning this being in the same category. So that's kind of like what's already on the needles that I would like to get finished and at least just finishing these two sweaters, my Ingrid and my Farnham, will like make me feel significantly better and like I did something okay and I accomplished something from my winter knitting. Okay, so kind of current whips aside, what am I looking forward to and planning in the spring season for new cast-ons and such? And I'm going to be honest, I really had a hard time coming up with a long list of knitting projects um, for this spring. I feel like, in general, like... There are so many things that I want to knit. Obviously, I've got a stash full of yarn that I would like to get up, get knit up, but I'm really trying to focus on like, okay, what is going to significantly add value to my wardrobe? And when I think about it in those terms, I'm really thinking of tees that will be work appropriate that I can wear into the office when I have to go in tanks that I can wear when I'm working from home, throw a cardigan over it cardigans that I can throw over a t-shirt or a knitted tank and actually blankets. I would love to get my sweet shop blanket which I have here. I would love to get my sweet shop blanket back into rotation and get this finished this season so that I can cast on another blanket. I have two blanket quantities of yarn that are almost ready to go. I have a couple um, yarns that I'm still waiting to come in from some pre-orders. Um, man, this is like on, oh no, this is, I've got half, half a square done here. It is fully done. It's not attached to a ball, but the needles are still in here. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would like to get this blanket back into rotation, get it completed, um, so that I can start working on a new blanket because I've got two other blanket quantities and two other ideas for blankets that I would like to get started on. So thinking through like, like I said, I didn't have like that many ideas, but kind of where I want to start with the idea generation is go back to my make nine. So let me give you a sneak peek here. Actually, not a sneak peek. This is more of a reminder. Unless you didn't watch any of my, uh, like, start of the year 2024 videos, including my Make 9 video, then this would be new. But I have a whole video talking through my Make 9. Okay, that was a lot. Anyways, okay, you can see that I have started two of my projects. So, the Farnham sweater that I just showed you, and the Ingrid sweater that I just showed you. And I've got two tees and a tank on here. So this is really where my mind goes with starting my spring knitting. Um, these two tees, I believe, would definitely be like work appropriate uh, that I could wear into the office. The first one is the Poppy Tee by Petite Knit. 
And let me show you the yarn that I already have in stash picked out for this. Kelborn Woolens Mojave yarn. It is... 60% cotton and 40% linen, 185 yards per 50 grams. Um, it is a, I think this is like a sport weight, maybe sport to DK weight yarn. Um, but I'm excited to try this out because it is a non-wool yarn. Um, like I said, cotton and linen. So I think this is going to be a really interesting yarn to work with and make a really nice fabric for the poppy tea. The second make on here is the Farnham Tea by the Knit Pearl Girl. Yes, you heard that right. I am knitting the Farnham sweater and I'm also knitting the Farnham Tea because... I have been super into stripes and have not mit knit very many things with stripes and so this year on my make nine I put two of the designs <laughs> that have stripes. They're the same pattern, just the sweater pattern and then the tee pattern. Um, and let me show you the yarn that I have already picked out and in my stash for this is the Sandus Garn Line. Um, and this is a cotton linen viscose blend. It's 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. I have actually used this yarn before. I knit a tank top in this last year, and I really liked working with this yarn, so I'm happy to be having it on my needles again um, this year, and yeah, I'm excited for this striped tee. It is interesting because this yarn is definitely more of like a DK worsted weight, um, which is thicker than the yarn that I'm using for my Farnham sweater is a sport weight. So the tee is actually going to be thicker, but in like, you know, this cotton linen blend. I don't know. We'll have to see how I feel about this um, when it's done and I'm wearing it and if I have thoughts like comparing the two, I will be excited to talk you through them, whatever those thoughts may be. Okay, the last thing that's here on my Make 9 in like the spring-summer category is the Ribbed to Your Measure Tank by Lacey Williamson. This is like a kind of high neck... It comes in a little bit ribbed tank top and I really see this as being a staple um, tank top, something that I can wear underneath knitted cardigans um, and definitely something that I can wear when I'm like working from home. The thought right now is to knit this in a wool yarn because I have a bunch of two skein wool yarn quantities that I would like to use for tanks, but in the future I'm definitely open and interested in knitting this in like a merino cotton blend, a merino silk blend, something like that. And the other tank that kind of goes along with this in my mind is the mini mock neck tank. If you've been following uh, my podcasts along for the last couple of episodes, you will know that I did cast on the mini mock neck tank. And I had some issues with uh, the gauge and the sizing. So this is what I have. But I'm actually going to be like fully casting on a whole new tank when I decide... Uh, to pick this project back up. So right now this is one that I did start, but it is on pause um, because I am not working on this right now. It was my vacation project when we went on a cruise, realized I had some issues with it, and um, now that obviously I'm back from the cruise, I'm really putting my focus into those other two sweaters, and so this is on pause. But again, I see the mini mock neck tank and the rib tier measure as like tops that I can wear under cardigans, wear them when I'm working from home, wear them when I'm lounging, hanging out, and it's warm outside, but like we've got the AC on inside, so hopefully the wool tank top will be okay. I don't know. I've heard a lot of people talk about how like a wool tank top is a really bad idea because like 
if you're gonna wear a tank top like why wear wool because it's gonna be too warm so we'll see how I feel about it after knitting a couple of these patterns up and like in the future if I want to switch to you know a cotton blend silk blend like I talked about something like that okay those are like the three main projects that I know I like definitely want to knit kind of the other things on my list like I said the blanket and cardigans so I am really happy that I finished this cow cardigan this winter this is a pattern by Claire Jackson of perfectly knotted I would love to knit more cardigans the problem that I'm having is that Every time I go look up cardigan patterns on Ravelry, I like don't feel super drawn to like any cardigan patterns. I would love to knit a brioche or like half fisherman's rib cardigan pattern. I actually started one last year, the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta, and I'm halfway through the first sleeve so like it's relatively close to being done but I absolutely hate the yarn that I used for it um I used the knitting for olive heavy merino and I just don't like it it's not for me so maybe I need to go through my stash and see if there is another yarn that I have um that could work for knitting up that pattern or I just need to make the decision on if I want to knit up something like one of Petite Knit's patterns, whether the Agnet cardigan or the November jacket. Both are in that brioche, half fisherman's rib style that I think I would like in my wardrobe. I do have um, this one yarn that I picked out. It's this lovely like purple at least it looks purple in person but it's kind of got these like brownish undertones gray also from some in some lights um this is from well the label says beachy breeze fibers um but uh sam has now rebranded to clockwork fiber co but this is her cardigan or her colorway named cardigan focus there we go yep the colorway is named cardigan and it's on her lagoon dk base which is actually a 60 percent superwash merino wool 20 percent yak 20 percent silk so it's really soft you can definitely feel the yak and the silk in there um and i would love to knit this up into cardigan a cardigan um, and I love that it's named cardigan I feel like that is perfect for it um, but again I don't know if I have let's see yeah I have six skeins of this it's 231 yards so that's about 13 a little more than 1300 yards I just don't know if I have enough for like a half fisherman's rib cardigan because that stitch definitely uses up more yarn compared to like a stockinette cardigan so just something I need to think about um yeah and what type what the look is that I'm really going for in another cardigan you know I have knit up two of these cal cardigans because I just really liked the construction and the final product but at this point I don't think I need another one of the same pattern like I have two why do I need <laughs> more than that so I want to get something new something fresh but I do wear cardigans a lot because they're super easy to throw on in air conditioning in the car just around the house when it's cold you know something really nice so that's kind of where my thoughts are at with spring knitting I feel like I didn't give like a ton of pattern ideas, pattern recommendations. Um, I'm really trying not to like go overboard with casting things on like I did this winter, this January. And I really wanna stick a little bit more to having only a couple projects that I'm really focusing on at one time. Getting back to 
the knitting style that I had last year, 2023, that's that's pretty much what I did. I only had a couple going at a time. I felt like I was finishing things quicker. Um, it was just more satisfying and like I had more of a sense of accomplishment, <laughs> which I'm trying to get back to. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to taking you along with me as we move through spring. If you just found me from this video, hi, thanks for watching. I post weekly podcast episodes talking you through all of my works in progress, my finished objects, and anything else that I'm working on. And you can also go follow me over on Instagram at knitcalifornia if you want to see more of my day-to-day -day, uh, knitting and other things going on in my stories and just fun reels and posts that I post on the regular. Um, I'm also learning to spin right now so I've been talking through a lot of my spinning journey both on Instagram stories and on my TikTok um, and yeah just having fun with it. So thank you so much for watching uh, this video. I hope maybe I was able to inspire you with some of my thoughts, some of my ideas, and some of my plans for the spring knitting. Um, if you've got a couple patterns that you are really itching to cast on for spring knitting, I would love for you to leave a comment down below letting me know what those are because maybe that will inspire me uh, for knitting something else either this quarter or in the summer. So, all right, I think that's all I have for you for today. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!